Hi, I'm Jean Shafroff and I'm on a mission. Anyone can be a philanthropist. My television show came from my book, Successful Philanthropy, How to Make a Life by What You Give. Won't you join me? Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafaroff. This show is designed to highlight the work of leaders here in the United States and then beyond. Today with us, a fascinating guest, his name, Brian Polite. And Brian is the chairman of the Shinnecock Nation based in Southampton, New York. Let's all welcome Brian Polite. Hey, good afternoon. How are you? It's nice to be here. Oh, Brian, thank you very much for joining. And I stand corrected. You're actually the chairman of the Shinnecock Nation, correct? Yes, the Shinnecock Nation Council of Trustees, correct. Yes. And so for many people watching this, the Shinnecock Indian Reserve is a mystery. They know there's the reserve in Southampton, New York, but they know very little bit about the nation. Would you like to tell us a little bit about the nation. I know you're on 900 acres. I know you're all very much involved in your nation and then in the surrounding areas. And just give us a little information, please. Yeah, well, you know, our history is the history of the East and of Long Island. We've been here for 10,000 years. We're a first contact tribe, uh, 1640. We're still on our Aboriginal land, which is a uh, few tribes in the country um have that um, we have a very deep culture from whaling to wampum to most recently our endeavors in agriculture we have about uh, 1600 tribal members with 720 living on a 900 acre uh, territory here in southampton new york and with an additional 100 acres over uh, in hampton bays um called west woods which is pretty much untouched pristine land it's been our possession again for over 10,000 years. And we have a wide range of uh, tribal members uh, with different fields of professions, and uh, we're still here. Yes. Now, I understand you've been chairman for quite a number of years, and you're a very young person. You're also very well educated. Could you talk a little bit about your education and how that's helped you? Also, your travels. Sure. Um, well, this is, I mean, I don't know if three terms is a long time. It's too much for me sometimes. But um, yeah, so I mean, I, I graduated uh, John Jay College um, in 2006. I uh, was a police officer for two years. I graduated from the Fletchy Law Enforcement Training Academy out in Artesia, New Mexico. Uh, I did a year of law school down at Florida Coastal School of Law. And yeah, I went uh, pretty much to about four continents around the world in my 20s, just traveling around with friends and also just going and backpacking to places like Egypt and Italy. Now, the reserve, what are the top priorities for the reserve as we move forward? Well, the number one priority is cultural um, to, to uh, keep our culture and cultural pride. And the second priority is economic development and developing self-sustaining um, projects so that we do not have to rely on outside grants. And then the third project, I mean, the third is getting our land back um, that was stolen from us, both in the Shinnecock Hills um, and also right here in Southampton. And give us a little information about the land that you're trying to get back. Well, just recently we were able to uh, get back land um, a place called Sugarloaf, which was actually a 3,000 year old burial site, um, which they had desecrated and put a private home, a mansion on it. We worked with uh, a group of Shinnecocks, the Shinnecock community, Southampton Town, as well as the Community Preservation Fund and also the Pecanic Land Trust. And we were able to acquire 4.3 acres back. And that is, you know, first step. It's a big step, but it's a first step. And I was trying to acquire back um, the land that was either stolen from us a land that is currently being desecrated with our ancestors' bones. And is there any area in Southampton where there are many residential homes that technically belong to the Shinnecock Nation? Well, we had a lawsuit back in the early 2000s where we sued 
uh, the state of New York, the town of Southampton, for illegally taking over 3,000 acres in 1859 um, of what we call the Shinnecock Hills. Um, that's a very pristine, uh, prestigious um, area of Southampton right now. You have the Southampton Golf Course, as well as the Long Island Railroad that went through it. So that is, you know, something that is always on the Shinnecock's minds, and it's, not, it's something that we will never, ever um, stop fighting for. I understand. And the people living on the reserve, the children, they go to the public schools in Southampton. How important is education for the Shinnecock Nation? Oh, it's hugely important. You know, just like any other community, education plays a giant role in not only educating our children, but bringing that knowledge back to our community to better our community. Um, that's what, you know, we've been trying to do is bring our our uh, professionals home so that they can help us uh, move forward as a community. I'm an example of that. I sit with council members who are example of that who went out and not just education in a traditional sense like college, but also military experience, police experience, and really going out and, uh, you know, getting that knowledge and then bringing back and helping us build a, a you know, a stable community. Yes, I think education is very important for all future generations. Now, Brian, there's been a lot of talk about a casino being built on the Shinnecock Nation's land here in Southampton. Is the nation moving forward with that plan? Um, you know, I'm sure you've been following the news publications about the casino, and we're still, uh, you know, on track to um, get our approval from the National Indian Gaming Commission for our environmental impact study. We already got the initial approval to move forward with the casino. Now we just have to uh, do our due diligence on the, on the uh, environmental impact side. And would that casino contain a hotel with restaurants and parking facilities? And, and then what about the impact on water? Yeah, so that all goes, the impact on water and the environmental impact is something obviously near and dear to the Shinnecock people. Um, you know, we are surrounded sometimes by these mega mansions that pollute the bay, and we're not going to try to, you know, follow suit and do the same thing. So it's very important to us, and that's why we're going through the process of the environmental impact study. As far as a hotel is concerned right now, we're not looking at a hotel on that site. We're just looking at um, about 100 100 table games and about a thousand slots, VLTs. And when would the casino open up, do you think? Uh, probably, you know, it'll probably be anywhere from an 18 to a 24 month build out um, once we get the necessary approvals in the environmental impact study. So it seems like. And I understand you recently received a $9 million federal grant. Yeah. Uh, from the Biden administration and that you're expecting about half of that moving forward. What are you doing with the money? Well, currently we're, you know, in the planning process of um, asking the community um, through advisory committees on how to best um, spend the American Rescue Plan money. So far, we've gotten a lot of responses about infrastructure, um, continuing the programs that we had during the CARES Act, um, with utilities assistance, assisting people uh, with rent assistance, providing computers to, for kids for um, remote learning, and uh, really possibly building a rec center. So there's a lot of ideas that the community is coming forward and giving us, um, and we're really appreciative for you know the Biden administration almost tripling the amount of money that uh, we got under the CARES Act. How could the state and federal government be helpful to the Shinnecock Nation? Well, the state government can be very helpful for the Shinnecock Nation in sitting on the table and addressing our concerns that we've been trying to address with them for, you know, over the last three or four decades, mainly our land claims, um, trying to get a universal agreement um, so that we can proceed forward with um, a more suitable site for gaming and other issues like fishing rights um, and border disputes that we've had long standing. Um, the federal government, honestly, we've had a really good relationship with the federal government and our congressmen. So uh, just for the federal government to continue to support the Shinnecock Nation and recognize our sovereignty over our land. For our audience, 
We are with Brian Polite. He is the chairman of the Shinnecock Nation in Southampton, New York. And Brian is giving us a lot of information about the people and himself and then uh, the future of the Shinnecock Nation. Now, Brian, I've been reading a lot about how the Shinnecock Nation is getting involved in, is it uh, marijuana? plants or or something like that yeah. growing marijuana it's now yeah. legal and i'm just curious as to what exactly is happening yeah we have a medical cannabis program that the nation moved forward with it back in 2015 uh it closely models the new york state compassionate care act um that allowed for patients with certain uh ailments to receive a license from the state and to uh, purchase legal uh, medical cannabis. We are still very much pursuing that. Um, and as New York State has changed their laws um, regarding, we are also looking at um, internally, um, you know, how to react to those changes. But currently we're, you know, pursuing our medical cannabis project that we've now been pursuing for the last six years. Uh, Brian, what kind of laws do you have governing the people of the Shinnecock Nation and also the animals within the nation. Yeah, thank you. Um, we have coextensive laws like New York State has with the penal code. Um, and when it comes to animal cruelty, um, again, we have coextensive laws like New York State. So we're under um, the same kind of um, laws when it comes to animal cruelty as the outside. And just a note on the animal cruelty, I mean, we are um, good stewards of the land and we very much value animals, so. Thank you. And then I assume you have laws governing the behavior of the people within the nation. Yeah, we have, you know, we're self-governing, so not besides from the New York State Penal Code and everything like that, the nation does have the right to come together as a people and, you know, collectively enter into what, you know, they say on the outside of social contract where there are certain things that can, you know, behaviors that are not going to be tolerated up here, just like in any small community. Moving forward, tell us a little bit about uh, the children and, and, and what the priorities are. I have heard education is a big priority. And I see with your own education, you've, you've done a lot with your life. And I can only respect that. But what are some of the uh, priorities for the children of the nation? Yeah, so uh, several years ago, back, I believe in 2016, um, we opened the Winichinook Preschool, which is an early learning center for uh, infants to age four, um, where they learn uh, their cultural language, uh, the Shinnecock language, um, as well as getting you know a head start before they go out into the world. And that was a big accomplishment that took, you know, decades of work from tribal members um, across the spectrum from on territory tribal members to off territory tribal members. We also have an early, I mean, uh, uh, after school program, um, which helps kids with their homework um, and tutoring. Um, we're working on increasing uh, our activities which, uh, with the youth, uh, including a clubhouse. Um, which has been active now for the last year. And they have cultural events. They have a drum group. Um, they have outside events on Saturday, to keep the kids busy. They play sports, they go on field trips. Um, so that, and we're very active. The council is very active with the uh, Southampton School District and renegotiating, well, was renegotiating a contract to better identify how to support and help the Shinnecock Nation's children um, achieve more on their uh, testing and receive more education uh, post high school. Yes, and this show is about philanthropy. Brian, how can the Southampton community be helpful to the Shinnecock Nation? Well, there's a whole host of things that can be helpful. The main thing is to understand and respect the deep and long history of the Shinnecock people and also to respect the land that everybody inhabits out here on the East End because it is traditionally Shinnecock land. Um, so just being aware of that is a big step um, forward. And then also supporting the nation in our economic endeavors. Um, you know, we're constantly under attack sometimes 
um, from the state government when we try to do something or the local government sometimes, although this local government has stepped up to the plate on several occasions to uh, assist and support the nation, but there's still a lot of work to do. And so when we go and we say we want to build something that's going to help our people, we would very much appreciate for people to stand in solidarity and support us instead of, uh, you know, having blanket opinions about how it's going to destroy their way of life without thinking about how it's going to improve our way of life. Brian, I believe there is deep respect for the individuals and the Shinnecock Nation. And I think moving forward, it would be very nice in the future for there to be more socialization between the nation and, and the Southampton community. And I think if we work on that, that would happen because always when people come together and they socialize together, they work together, a stronger understanding and camaraderie and desire uh, to be together and work together results. And I'm yeah, sure you're totally. in agreement with that as well. No question. And, you know, we've tried to and continue to be good neighbors um, and want people to understand and know the Shinnecock people. And we're very welcoming people. So that is something that we very much um, agree with. Um, with and, and, and you know, over the years, there has been a lot. Of, you say you have friends up here. There's a lot of people who have friends and care deeply about the Shinnecock people. And that kind of, you know, those bridges being built are important and will continue to build them. Yes. And if someone wanted to take a visit uh, to the reserve, is that possible? Is it by appointment or is it something that you generally uh, don't do? If you don't have a friend up here, it's I wouldn't advise. In fact, it's not uh, appropriate for people to just come up here. In fact, you know, we're having um, issues with um, certain issues like that arise. And so, no, if you don't have a friend and you're not invited, um, this is private uh, property and sovereign land. And the person will be turned away and told that they're not allowed to be up here. But that's not to say if you have a friend or uh, if somebody wants to take a tour from, you know, they can contact the tribal office and depending on who they are, we can give them a tour. Um, but if they don't have a friend, they really shouldn't just be coming up here. This is private land. Do you have any fundraisers that the people living in Southampton and the surrounding community can attend to help the Shinnecock Nation? Uh, we have fundraising groups and but we don't really do fundraising events as uh, a government. Um, but when we do, you know, we appreciate people coming out and supporting our cause. Uh, during the uh, whole COVID pandemic, we did have an outpouring of support, not just monetarily to support the nation and feeding our people, but also local businesses that gave food. Um, and that was very much appreciated. And how did the Shinnecock Nation fare during the COVID-19 pandemic? We're still in the pandemic, but I'm assuming that you probably did all right and that you didn't have a lot of COVID on the um, property. No, that's not the case, actually. In the beginning of the pandemic, um, up until about November, um, we only had like four cases on territory. Um, after that, just like in the country, uh, we saw a big explosion, scary explosion of cases um, during the holidays and coming back and shot up to about 48 to 50 cases, um, which was very, you know, troubling numbers. Um, historically, tribes and indigenous cultures are more susceptible to pandemics. And so that was very much on our minds. And we were able to bring those numbers down through mass testing. And now we're trying to get as many people vaccinated as possible, uh, as well as having food programs and a whole array of other things to try to keep people safe. And I like that you're so concerned about the pandemic and doing everything possible to protect your people and then people in general outside of the Shinnecock Nation. And uh, finally, Brian, getting back to the big question, how can we all be helpful to the Shinnecock Nation? Again, just support our endeavors and, you know, uh, have an open mind instead of just assuming something or accepting a false narrative of us. Do the research. Um, we're here. We've been here for 10,000 years and, you know, we'll continue to try to educate the surrounding community on the Shinnecock people. 
And I want to thank you, Brian, for taking this interview, because when you speak to people like myself and others, it enables the divide or the confusion about this Chinnacock Nation to be reduced. People, if, if they don't know much about a group, then they can't understand that group. So through communication and, and through interviews like this, people learn more about who you are and the and, and, and who you are and you're just like anyone else, the, the nation and you're doing good and, and you, your people are law abiding people and it's all very positive. So Brian, as we conclude this interview, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, just thank you for you know uh, asking me to take the time to speak to you and your audience. And you know, again, the Shinnecock people uh, looks forward to inviting everybody back to our territory next year for our 76th annual powwow. Brian, thank you very much for joining us today. This concludes Successful Philanthropy. Our guest, Brian Polite, he is the chairman of the Shinnecock Indian Nation in Southampton, New York. I'm Jean Schafferoff, your host. I'll see you next week.